Alrighty, it's Saturday, March 17th, 2012, and it's time for Commons X. Well, with the uh, study and work schedule that I have, uh, and the level of sleep deprivation that I usually end up with, uh, sometimes I could end up missing an entire month, so uh, <laughs> I had to send a friend whose birthday was in February, and I forgot the whole month of February. Kind of lost the whole thing. Uh, I gotta wish him a happy, bir happy birthday. So this is a shout out to my friend Paul. Uh, a happy birthday. Uh, a bl happy belated birthday, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> I said missed the I missed the entire month. Lost the Mister lost the entire month of February. So I was there, but didn't realize the time had gone by. Uh, so today's going to be an interesting day. I got I have several options on how to organize my day. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. Uh, that's because yesterday, although I was supposed to uh, get out the news, what I decided to do was to upload a test documentary to see uh, whether or not YouTube would censor it uh, on my news channel. I want to. I sort of want to see. Um, it's trying to test out the length of uh, 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 that I can that I can upload to YouTube, and it looks now that I can upload an hour. So um, now that I've got a time format, now I can shoot to see how long I can I can sort of uh, aim my documentaries for. But I think I'm going to keep my documentaries in uh, basically a 50-minute format, 50-55 minutes around there. So uh, now that I've got the time format for my documentaries, uh, I can now sit down and start doing uh, a better layout uh, of them. And that's what I've got to do today is I've got to go through and organize uh, several documentaries. I've got to put the notes together. Uh, I also want to start putting together uh, reference clips that I want to bring in. And then hopefully, uh, I don't know, either today or tomorrow, do some test edits and some test shots to see how things will work out and that way uh, uh, next week uh, will be my first week of producing documentaries so I got comments X out this is off the fly off right off the top of my head there's no script there's no notes this is me as raw as it gets in terms of you know preparation then after that um, there's the news I do have notes that I use for the, the news but I, I, I have a hard time scripting things out because I don't always I, I need to change things excuse me as I think of them and this is the thing so what I'm thinking is not necessarily exactly what I'm going to say and in many cases, this is the problem. My thinking is so much faster than my writing is. I think this is maybe where a lot of the problem is for people who like reading but really can't get the grasp of writing, is that your thoughts move quicker than you can actually physically either type them out or write them out. And so it doesn't necessarily come out the way... It doesn't, your, your communications never come out the way you think they are in your head. And then, about, uh, then as you're starting to write the thing out, you're concentrating on using the, the right words and putting the sentence together, your mind kind of flips and says, well, there's, there's a better way to do this. And you think of a whole variety of different ways of saying what you want to say. And if you end up in an indecisive position where you really can't decide what you want, uh, this winds up causing you a certain degree of grief uh, and this is where a lot of the stuttering the ums and the pauses comes in because you can't really think of what you want to say and you get stuck and th 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 this happens to me this and this is why uh, common text is so important is it gives me the practice for the news at night and again when I'm doing the documentaries uh, to do a more, uh, uh, well, a, a, a better, not a more, a better job of uh, speaking. 
so that uh, when I'm saying what I want to say, the speech is both effective and appropriate. Because uh, you, you end up saying the wrong things. You can end up, you know, you, you, you know <laughs> if you hear people use uh, incorrect grammar, and just right there when I say incorrect grammar, my, but the first thought that popped in my head was wrong grammar, but that's not, that's not grammatically correct. It should be incorrect grammar. And it, was, it popped in because he was thinking about, my mind was thinking about grammar and that when you speak, it's wrong. But the wrong came out first rather than, you know, it, it, it was, the wrong had the implication that the grammar was wrong and incorrect. So that's sort of the way I think, but it just, just the wrong popped up as I was thinking about the, uh, the grammar. So, and my, my, initial reaction response was to say wrong grammar instead of incorrect grammar. And this is, the, this is what happens when sometimes you, you, you're, you're uh, trying to remember somebody's name and all of a sudden your mind goes blank and you can't remember the person's name. Um, it happens on tests where you've done all your stuff, you know your stuff, you get on the test and all of a sudden everything's gone. So. Uh, it happens. Uh, I've seen it happen to a number of YouTubers. They get on, the, you know, they get on their channel. They start speaking. All of a sudden, there it goes. The mind goes blank. So I now have a better appreciation uh, for speaking in front of the camera. Uh, in addition to cadence, and uh, cadence is the uh, meter which which you speak. So you don't speak like as a monotone. You don't have, you know, uh, welcome to class, people. My name is, you know. That, that type of monotone, you need to have some inflection, some, uh, some animation to your voice so that you uh, sound, so that, the, so that the voice doesn't put you to sleep. And there are the, 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 the uh, pauses there where it's just try to figure out how I was going to phrase what I was, how I was, how I was going to say what I was going to say. And even though I know, even though we're talking about a phrase, saying what I was going to say was the better choice rather than um, how I was going to phrase what I was going to phrase. Anyways, um, yeah, this is it. Uh, we're moving down to now. This is uh, that um, Monday will be the start. Will be the start of the first week of documentaries that I'll be producing. Uh, I've cleared up most of the uh, work that needs to get done for that. I just got a little bit more cleaning up to do and fixing up to do over the weekend, including some of the test shops, test shots. I also have to do uh, some cleaning. There's a fair bit of cleaning that I have to do around here. Uh, when uh, my workload gets to the point where uh, uh, all I'm doing is getting up, getting going to my computer in my library, and then working through the day. Um, like Cassandra, you saw, if you watch uh, Cassandra's Nerds RL, you can sort of see uh, every once in a while she'll point to the floor and she's got these bowls of food next to her desk and she's obviously eating while she's working. Well, that's standard. You know, if, you, if you're doing any type of work where, where it's long and you, and you have to be involved in it for long periods of time and you lose track of time, you end up eating where you're working and that's sort of the same situation here. And Every so often, you have to kind of uh, get up and pick up the place because even if even if you can clean the mess that you make make by the end of the day and sort of keep things at a constant pace that you're always using the same dishes over and over again, m m you know, meaning that they're clean. You you use the dish, you clean it, you put it back to where it was, and then you go out and you use it again. Uh, Even if you're doing that, there is still other stuff around the place that gets dirty if you leave it. And so if they get, if that happens, uh, and you end up for a long period of time, sometimes I've, I've been doing this now, uh, straight on up, uh, getting used to this workload uh, of writing and studying. I've been sort of really pushing uh, my limits uh, for more than two months now. So the amount of cleaning that has to get done around here is kind of significant now. So I'll probably spend the weekend doing that now that I'm getting more caught up. My efficiency level in terms of what I'm able to do is now sort of getting to the point where 
I can start branching out and doing extra things. Uh, I still have to replace uh, some of the funding that uh, sort of disappeared this year because due to the recession and economic conditions, a number of the uh, a number of the funding uh, that I had had is now gone. So uh, I have to uh, uh, go out and uh, try to uh, get some more money in. And what I've gotten the down down below bar is the first link up there is uh, if you can spare ten dollars uh, a month, uh, I'd be, you know that would be much appreciated if you could spend ten dollars. If you could spare ten dollars a month, just click the link on the down, down on in the description down below, uh, and it's the first one. And uh, thank you very much for that, and uh, it will be put to good use. Um, there's a, a lot. Once the documentary start rolling out, a lot more uh, stuff will start coming out. You'll, you'll you'll see things that you'll be able to take from here. I'm also planning a uh, uh, sort of a, a food series that shows you how to make good quality restaurant food uh, for cheaper than what you would normally buy uh, in a supermarket. So um, if you're if you're struggling to meet, make ends meet, and you're buying everything out at a, at a grocery at uh, already pre-made, or you're buying um, uh, like McDonald's a lot, I'll show you how to cut that down and actually start having better food for a, a, a much less cost. It's, it's a sort of a you'll have a significant savings on your food bill. That's what I've done here. Is uh, of uh, I haven't cut down the, the quality. My quality of food has actually increased, but the cost of what I'm eating per meal has really dropped down. Uh, I'm now back into. I think I'm uh, I'm spending about forty dollars a week on food, and that's actually pretty good. If I could, if I could stay doing the forty dollars a week, I want to try to get down to about fifteen dollars a week for food. Uh, just to give myself a little bit more of, of uh, a cushion, uh, but uh, thirty dollars a week is still good, anyways. Uh, all things considering, and it's not that I've cut out meals or anything like that. Uh, I have full meals, uh, snacks, and everything like that. It's just I I've stopped buying prepackaged foods, so I'm doing a lot of baking. I'm doing a lot of cooking, um, and I use. Uh, I've learned a lot from. Uh, I say my grandmother's uh, because basically uh, anyone who's uh, old enough to be uh, a grandmother in, in uh, my Greek in the Middle Eastern community uh, becomes your grandmother. So, and if you watch them cook, and these are all these, they, they are, they were, were, my grandmothers are all immigrants. They came over from when they, when they were young uh, from Greece and uh, the Middle East, and uh, they brought all their village cooking skills with them. And so, if you watch them, you can really learn how to cook. And they make everything from scratch. Every, you know, they don't not, nothing. Nothing is bought in terms of being prepackaged. They never they, for them buying. Pre they. they, they, they <laughs> It's the worst thing in the world for 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 for, for them if you buy something that's prepackaged. They want to make everything themselves. Uh, it's not acceptable to go out to McDonald's. McDonald's, I grew, the way I grew up, McDonald's was never uh, a meal. That was never considered to be food. It was a snack. You know, you had your meals. You had your full. You know, if you wanted to go out and have a snack, you can go to McDonald's every once. Every once in a blue moon, you can go to McDonald's. Otherwise, uh, everything was uh, homemade. Everything uh, was uh, scratch made, and I, I, I liked it, but I didn't have a, a, a better appreciation of it until later on when I was out on my own and uh, I needed to sort of cut back my food budget to spend more on my research. Uh, that. Uh, I started paying more attention to um, how my grandmother's cooked, and as I started doing that, I started being able to make 
the uh, whatever they were making. And this includes the baklava, this includes the beat this, the, you know, all these different things I learned how to make, including uh, I learned how to, from there, I learned how to make my own cold cuts, the, 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 the called the cured meats. And the cost was, the, the, the cost reduction was unbelievable. And I was, I was eating better food and the amount that I was paying for the food was significantly cheaper. It was, you know, and, and I would say it's more than 50%. So, this is sort of where I've sort of come out to now is that uh, that you can reduce the uh, amount you spend on food while at the same time increasing the quality of food that you have, uh, that you're eating. And uh, so what I'm going to do is that as uh, things get going here and I get used to doing the documentaries, uh, I think I'm gonna, I, I want to share this experience with you so that uh, if you're in that position where you've lost a job or uh, you, your, your family maybe doesn't have enough money, that you can sort of figure out how to uh, cut your food budget and still have the amount of food that you ever want to have. I said you can get down to, uh, there's a reason, you can reasonably get down to about $30 a week for food. So, anyways, um, so I still got to figure out what I'm going to do for the day. So I'll leave this for now. Uh, I've got uh, to do, I'm going to be doing the uh, the Friday, the Saturday, Sunday gift for the Right and Proper Ladies. I have forgotten, so I'll be doing that next. Uh, you'll see this pop up uh, uh, in the playlist, Right and Proper Ladies. And uh, I'm going to talk to and see uh, uh, more some more of my friends on YouTube, uh, particularly Angela. Um, I think it's Jessica, or I know it's uh, Jay Dene, uh from uh, We Wear Pantyhose, uh, which I talked to her once in a while. Uh, I'll probably pop by uh, Cassandra, uh, and then of course uh, see what uh, helicopters up to. You know, just sort of uh, flip around and see what my old my friends are doing, and uh, comment back and forth. So I'll see you guys um, uh, on the right and proper ladies in a few minutes. All right, take it easy.